My guy got up. Did I say what chapter? Matthew chapter number 14. Yeah, it's good to be in church, ain't it? Even if y'all got to listen to bad preaching, it's still good to be in church. <laughs> no, I get at least one amen out of that. Matthew chapter number 14. We'll start reading in verse number 13. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 13. The Bible says, When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and healed their sick. Hey, that's good. You need to follow Jesus. I just had seen that when I was reading it. I ain't even thought about that. But that's, that's something that if you're going to follow Jesus, that's a good person to follow. Yeah. You shouldn't be following man. You need to make sure you're following Jesus. Hey, they done it on foot. It was hard, but they followed Jesus. Right. Hey, and when it was even, the disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past, send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages to buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto him, them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, the grass in a desert place, like he said a few, minutes, few verses ago. That's, that's a miracle in itself. Yeah. And took the five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven, and he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men beside women and children. Brother James, you pray for us this evening. This is a very common passage of Scripture. If I was going to ask you about this feeding of the 5,000, most of you would have said the little lad had five loaves and two fishes. But you know who wasn't mentioned in this, in this passage right here? The little lad wasn't mentioned right here. He's only mentioned in the, in the account in John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke don't mention the little lad. Hey, but the little lad was willing to give up his lunch even if he wasn't in the limelight. That's hey, right. are you willing yeah. to give God what he asks even if he's not going to put you in front of everybody and let you let everybody know? Hey, and only John was the one that mentioned him. Hey, don't be afraid to give God your all. Yeah. Hey, the little lad could have said no. He could have said, no, I want, my, I want my lunch. I brought that lunch. It's been a long day. I'm hungry. We're in a desert. Hey, yeah. he could have said no. Hey, God wouldn't have took it. God wouldn't have took it. God was wanting him to give it up willingly. God wants you to give your life willingly. He will not take your life uh, by force. He wants you to give it up willingly. Hey, there's no telling what God would do with you if you give him your life. Hey, there was, that little lad had no clue that God was going to do that with that five loaves and two fishes. Ended up with 12 baskets full. Hey, he done more than he could have thought. Hey, he'll do more with your life than you could even imagine if you give it to him. Hey, God, you, God might use your life to help others. Hey, that little lad allowed, he allowed uh, that little lad to feed 5,000 people just because he gave up his lunch. Hey, you might give up your life and God will take your life and do great things with it. Hey, don't be afraid to give God your all. Hey, but for a few minutes, and I mean a few minutes, y'all know I preach quick. I want to preach on that phrase in verse number 16 where Jesus said, they need not depart. And I want to preach on a simple thought on don't depart. Yeah. Yeah. Don't depart. Hey, don't leave. Don't depart. Number one, don't depart from the sanctuary. Look at yeah. Hebrews chapter number 10. Hey, don't depart from the sanctuary. Don't depart from the house of God. Hey, this is where you get your help. Yep. Hey, don't depart. Hey, he preached on it earlier about getting your restoration this, earlier this morning. Hey, don't depart from the house of God. Don't depart from the sanctuary. Hebrews 10, verse 25, the Bible says, Not forsaking 
the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Hey, some people are departing. Yeah. Some people are going to depart. Hey, and you're going to see their life and you're going to say, well, they left. Hey, don't leave as the manner of some is. You need to stick with, stick with the house of God. Hey, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Flip over to chapter 11 right there. Look in verse 25. Chapter 11, the great hall of faith. He's talking about Moses there. And in verse 25 it says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Hey, he chose to stay with the people of God. Hey, you know what it said? To suffer affliction. Hey, you be around people as much as we are, and you're going to get on everybody's nerves. Somebody's going to get on your nerves. Hey, you got to stick it out. you got to suffer affliction with the people of God. Hey, uh, uh, Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the counsel of his friend. Countenance of his friend. Hey, are, or how sharp are you? Are you around good iron that can sharpen your iron? Hey, are you, is your witness sharp? Hey, is your testimony sharp? Hey, uh, look in Galatians. Galatians chapter number 2. Galatians chapter 2. Hey, don't depart the sanctuary. Don't depart. Galatians chapter number 2. Galatians chapter 6. Sorry, verse number 2. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Hey, bear ye one another's burdens. Where do you do that? Down at the church. Who bears your burdens? Your church family will bear your burdens. Hey, your brothers and sisters in Christ can bear your burdens. Hey, look in uh, Ephesians. Flip over a few pages in chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look in verse number 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Hey, he said endeavoring to keep the unity of Spirit. Hey, he said it's going to be hard. Yeah. You've got to try real hard to keep, the unity, keep unity in the church. Look at Psalms chapter 73. This is a very, uh, very familiar little verse right here when you're talking about the church, but I like reading it. It's a good verse. Psalm 73, verse number 16. Psalm 73, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, when I, if you just read the first, the first verses in this chapter, he's talking about how he looked at the world and he thought, man, they're getting by. They're doing so much better than me. And down in verse 16, it says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Hey, church is where he got his help. Hey, don't depart from the church. Don't depart the church. Hey, number two, don't depart from the service. Don't depart from the service. Look in uh, uh, Psalms, uh, Romans, sorry, Romans chapter 12. Don't depart from the service. Hey, don't leave the church. Don't depart from the service. Romans chapter 12, verses number 1 and 2. You know the verses, but look at it. So Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hey, he said it's your reasonable service to live for God. Hey, don't depart from the service. Hey, look in, uh, look in Philippians. Flip over to Philippians. We're doing a lot of turning, but it's good for you. Philippians Amen. chapter number 2. Don't depart from the service. Hey, don't, don't, don't give up witnessing. Don't stop telling somebody about Jesus. Right. Don't stop living for God. Don't stop going to church. Don't stop reading your Bible. Hey, do the things you know you're supposed to do. Hey, in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, look, and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hey, even God was willing to become a servant. Hey, we should be willing to serve God. Hey, you need to be willing to become a servant. He said, let this mind be in you. Hey, you need to have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is a servant's mind. Hey, don't depart from the service. Look in uh, Philippians chapter number 1, maybe on the same page, verse 21. It says, for me to live is Christ... And to die is gain. Hey, are you living for Christ? Are you living for God or are you living for yourself? Who are you living for? Hey, in uh, chapter 2, verse 21, it says, For all seek their own, not the things which are of Jesus Christ. You heard them say, Are you a Philippians 121 or a 221? Yeah. Which one are you? Right. Hey, uh, look in uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, 
chapter number 1, 1 Timothy 1, verse number 12. Hey, don't depart, church. Don't depart from the sanctuary. Don't depart from the service. 1 Timothy chapter 1, look at verse number 12. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Hey, if God put you in the ministry, how can you depart? If God thought you were faithful enough, he counted you faithful, putting you in the ministry, how could you depart? Hey, don't depart from the service. Look in uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 11, I mean 1, verse number 11. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse number 11 says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know, it, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep me, right. that he is able to keep that which he hath committed unto him against that day. Flip over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Hey, he, said, he said, For which cause I have suffered these things. Hey, it's not always going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to stay in the sanctuary because you're going to have brethren that you're going to get ill with. It's not going to be easy to stay in the service because you might suffer a little persecution. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look in 1 Peter chapter number 4. Uh, look at verse number 12. It says, Brethren, beloved, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when, his glory, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad with exceeding joy. Right. Hey, the problem is some of us are suffering for our fault. Yeah. We're not suffering for Christ's sake. Hey, if you're suffering for Christ's sake and you're suffering because you're trying to live for God and you're trying to serve God, hey, he said, he said you need to have glory in that. He said, don't think, think it not strange that some trial is trying you. Hey, it's going to get hard, hey, but make sure you're suffering for the right thing. Yeah, right. Make sure you're suffering for God. Hey, God's worth suffering for. Amen. He suffered for us. I say we could suffer for him. Hey, not only don't, don't depart from the sanctuary, don't depart from the service. Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Hey, don't depart from your supplication. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse number 17. Most of you could quote this verse if I asked you to. 1 Thessalonians 5 17 says, pray without ceasing. He said, don't stop praying. Yeah. Hey, don't depart from your supplication. Look in James James chapter 5. This is a very uh, common too, but look at James chapter 5. All I preach is common verses. James chapter 5, verse number 16. Hey, that, that, you can't read a verse too much. You can't, you can't read a certain verse too many, too many times. Hey, James chapter 5, verse 16. If it was good to read the first time, it's good to read the hundredth time. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. Hey, the problem is sometimes it's not a righteous man praying. Yeah. Sometimes you're a sinner that you're trying to pray and you're saying, well, God ain't answering. Hey, are you living righteous? Yeah, right. Are you living for God? Hey, and I'll tell you this too. God always answers. He might not answer the way you want him to, but he's always going to answer. Right. It might be a no, but it'll be an answer. Right. Hey, don't just pray once. Hey, if you went to somebody's house and knocked on the door, you wouldn't knock once and say, well, they ain't home. I'll go away. No, you're going to knock two or three times, four or five times, maybe until you get an answer. Yeah. Hey, if you really wanted to get up with him, you stand there and knock, you call the phone, you do whatever you had to do to get up with him. Yeah. Hey, you better, hey, if you have something that you need God to answer, don't just ask once. Ask him over and over. Let him know it's urgent. Hey, it's the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Hey, look in James chapter 4. Flip back to chapter 4. Look at verse 3. James 4 verse 3, it says, Ye ask and receive not. Because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. Hey, are you asking for God's will when you're praying? Are you praying for God's will or something that you want? Hey, look in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Don't depart from your supplication. Hey, your prayer life is important. How's your prayer life? Hebrews chapter 4, verses number 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Hey, Esther came boldly to the, to the king, but she, you know how she come boldly? Because she was on her knees praying the days before. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you need to get on your knees and pray, and you can have some boldness in your life. Yeah. Hey, don't depart from the sanctuary. Don't depart from the service. Don't depart from supplication. Number four, don't depart from the scripture. Yeah. Look in uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 
chapter 2, verse number 15. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. Hey, can God look at your life and say, I approve of that? Hey, he says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Hey, is God approved with how much you study the scriptures? Is God approved with how much you're in the Bible? Hey, I say we all could be in it more. It don't matter how much you are, you could be in it more. Look at uh, back in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Well, God put his stamp of approval on, your, on how much you're in the Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12. It says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Look at this. Till I come, give attendance to reading, yep. to exhortation, right. and to doctrine. He said, Until I come, don't depart from the Scripture. Amen. Hey, don't quit reading the Bible. Hey, the Scripture told me how to be saved. Yeah. Hey, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, it says over and over, according to the Scriptures, right. and that he died and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Yeah, right. Hey, the Scriptures uh, teach you how, tell you how to live. Yeah. The, scri the Scriptures uh, tell you how to raise a family. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, in Ephesians chapter 6, he tells you how to raise a family. The scriptures will tell you how to love your wife, husband. Yep. It also tell you how to submit to your husband, wife in Ephesians chapter 5. Hey, the scriptures will tell you how to live your life. Hey, don't depart from the scriptures. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to divide asunder the soul and spirits and of the joints of marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Look in uh, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Hey, don't depart from the Scripture. Hey, the Scripture, hey, it, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. And over there it says faith come up by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you're not in the Word of God, you're not going to be able to walk like you're supposed to. Yeah, right. Hey, you've got to have the, you got to have the Word of God to live like you're supposed to. And uh, Psalms 119, look in verse number 9. Psalms 119, verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O oh Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments, all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as, as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. And I will not forget thy word. Look down in verse uh, 105, same chapter. The Bible says, the word, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This, the Bible will tell you how to live your life. It will tell you how to walk for God. It will show you which way you need to go. The Bible is how we live. This is our instructions. You know the acronym for Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. You need to be in your Bible. This is your, this is your road map. Hey, don't depart from the scripture. Don't depart from the scripture. And lastly, look in John chapter number 6. Don't depart from the sanctuary. Don't depart from your service. Man, God's done so much for us, but at least we could do is serve him. Don't depart from your supplication. Don't depart from the scripture. But most importantly, look in verse number 66. Don't depart from the Savior. Yeah. Don't depart from the Savior. Uh, John 6, verse 66, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Hey, and then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Yep. Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Hey, don't depart from the Savior. Amen. Don't leave God. Hey, don't, don't depart from the Savior. Look in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at verse number 9. The Bible says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus, for our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Look back in chapter number 5. Look in verse 21. Bible says, for he hath made him, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. God's done so much for us. How could we walk away from Him? Yeah. God's done so much for you. If you're saved, hey, if you're lost, God's given you breath in your lungs. Yeah. Hey, you shouldn't depart from the Savior. You need to be saved. But if you're a saved Christian, God saved you from eternal hell. He took your place in hell. How could you walk away? Look in uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Those are just a few verses. There are so many verses on what God's done for us. But if you've been in church any time, you know what God's did for you. Hey, don't walk away from the Savior. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse number 16. It says, At my first answer, this is Paul speaking, No man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charges. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. And strengthened me that by, my, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, God's not going to leave you. God stood with Paul when nobody else would. God will stand with you when nobody else would. Hey, in Hebrews 13 verse 5, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God will never leave you. Hey, don't leave him. Yeah. God will never leave you. Don't forsake right. him. Don't right. depart. Hey, don't depart from the sanctuary. Don't depart from the service, your supplication, the scripture, but most importantly, don't depart from the Savior. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you're here and you're lost, hey, you need to be saved. Don't depart from this church lost. Yeah. Don't leave here lost. Right. Amen.